Hey guys, so um, in this video we're going to be going over plan views, elevations, and sections. Um, I wanted to show you guys a couple different things that um, you, you'll be working on and then later we'll move to sheets themselves and we'll actually touch on sheets for a minute here. Um, but this is kind of like part one of getting you guys introduced to um, actually putting together sheets, but um, we're going to kind of move not quite there for your project too. So um, I will begin at least here by clicking on view and sheet, and we're going to create a sheet just so that we can um, uh, have something to work with. Um, title blocks, um, and we'll use an RD for this. So I'll hit OK. Here's my sheet. So when I'm working with the floor plans, um, typically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dragging them from the menu here in the project browser here into this window. And so once I've done that, you can see that we've got a couple issues that we would probably want to address with this, right? So um, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this now. And I'm going to right click on this floor plan level one and I'm going to duplicate the view with detailing. And so what that did is, I now have a level one and I have a level one copy. And so the way that I like to work is I have sort of a working copy of a, le of a level in Revit and then I will have a um, sort of display one that I kind of get set up and I don't touch. So this one right here, I'm actually gonna rename to output uh, just for the sake of, of showing what I'm talking about. So we have our level one output here and I'm gonna move this, oh, come on, there we go. Um, back to the sheet, let me actually move the sheet over here. Uh, nope, that's, we're just not gonna do that. There, there it is, okay. So here's our sheet. Um, I'll drag this level one output over to here. And so now we have this, Technically, so far, the same thing. We haven't made any changes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this output. I'm going to choose Visibility Graphics. And then Revit was finally nice enough to add a category name search here. So now we can search for uh, what I'm looking for. And in this case, it's Elevation. Uh, under, oh. um, under the Annotation Categories Elevation. Because I want to remove the exterior elevation markers in this case. So if I do that, you see that um, now this there's a lot of less stuff around here. Um, if I go back to this level one, you can see there's those exterior elevations for the site effectively. Um, and in this one, there's none. So you can see that applying sort of filters with the visibility graphic overrides here um, will affect the one that you make the changes to and not the other. So one I would keep, this one I'd probably just keep messing around with, making all my changes in here, and then this one, for example, I might take the um, option to modify this in different ways. So um, the next thing I want to do is scale this. I've mentioned that there's a scale option down here, but we haven't really worked with it before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that, set that to quarter inch equals one foot. And then we have obviously the issue of this is now kind of out of position. So I'm going to move that there, and then I'm going to move this back here. Um, keep in mind that with Revit, this is kind of a goofy operation for moving these because um, when you click on the drawing, you can move. Uh, what is it? Ah. How does it work? If you're not clicked on it, you can move this, but if you click on it, all you can do is adjust the sides. Yeah, it always messes me up every single time. Um, so that's the drawing there for that floor plan and this one I can actually move up to here and then um, because these are settings um, or because we made just a small number of settings here I'm going to apply the same thing here so I'm going to go to where is it duplicate view with detailing and again this will be my level 2 output so then again um, or what I can do here though um, is just go again in here annotation categories elevations and we can turn those off so I don't have to deal with those quarter inch uh, drag that in here 
And because I set those up ahead of time, this comes like much closer together. And it's a little bit nicer formatted um, to the width of the drawing, which can help. Okay, so there we have now, um, let me just move this back over here. So you see that very quickly we are able to put two floor plans, level one and level two. Um, obviously these are not the names I would go with for a final presentation, um, but that's how to quickly put two drawings into a sheet, okay? Um, so there's more that um, we can do with plans, but for this kind of step this far in the semester, that's as far as we're going to get with um, actual um, floor plans, and just be aware that um, those filters exist. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to go back to my level one, and actually let's go to level one. Oh yeah, level one output. Uh, sorry, level one. Um, so actually documenting things here in Revit. So to actually generate, um, we're going to generate elevations and sections. So Revit comes with, again, in the view menu, the elevation tab right here. And if you click on that, what you end up with is, is this giant marker. So I'm actually, it helps again me visually to turn this to quarter inch because that marker gets a lot smaller. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, clockwise around the house, starting at the top left, and then I'll do level two as well. So I can just go room by room, and I like just out of habit of having that kind of on the upper direction. Um, and I'm trying to find kind of a space close to the the top center um, of each sort of space that we have in here but obviously if I go too far south it's gonna just snap to another wall so I'm just gonna try and get that direction going um, and then same thing we'll go to level two. Oh, need to yeah level two need to adjust that to quarter inch and then same process so uh, we'll do this one that way there, there, there. That's open. Oh, I'm missing doors up here. Eh, we'll fix that before I send it to you guys. All right. So, um, oh, that's wrong too. Jeez. Um, that's what I get for just quickly throwing a model together for this presentation. So, um, all right. So, while I was doing that, if you had a keen eye, you would have seen that down here, it was generating all of these little elevations, right? So what I'm going to do is, um, and let's see if I can get this to work right, because I've gotten it to work right in the past, and then it changes. So I'm going to change that to N, and if we're lucky, what's going to happen is it's going to do that same thing we did with the datum lines, but it's probably not. Who am I kidding? Yeah, it's not. Okay. So at least if I do it in that order, I can now go in and I can re rename these east, south, and west. So um, as you can see, as I added those, it added these little arrows here. And then if I go in here, I can right click on this and I can choose go to elevation view. So this is the elevation here. Um, that we just generated with that. And as you can see, it's a fairly simple elevation with, what is going on here? Something else is wonky with this model. It shouldn't be showing that. Um, oh, I think I know what it is. This is just really high. All right, I'll fix the model before I send it to you guys. But um, so anyway, it just quickly generated this elevation. And if we cycle through, um, so again, we can right click on this and choose go to elevation view. And there's the other room or wall in this room. Um, but to kind of view a couple all at once, um, what I'm going to do, again, I'll just kind of group set these. So I'll select all three. Oh, good, we're already a quarter inch. Um, so then I'll go back to that sheet. Where's the sheet? Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's add a new sheet. So we have another page. And I'm just going to drag. Oops. Oh, I guess I can only do one at a time. All right. North, east, south, and west. Um, for right now, I know I there is a way to clean these up. I will show you guys in another lecture. Don't worry about that for now. 
um, just drop what they look like as is and we will move on from there. So uh, as you can see Revit just really quickly generated all the drawings that we needed for that one room um, just off of um, the act of placing this tag in here and then it's also gone and labeled the page and which drawing on that page it's referencing. So the process of actually adding Uh, oh, I thought that all four of those were already up. Oh my god. Okay, so we'll check those. This should be two. Yeah. So this is personally why I also I prefer to wait until I'm done. It's because it makes figuring out which of these. You know, if I hit F two. Oh, that's nice. Okay. I didn't think that would work. If you just hit F two, it goes straight in. Okay. Um, so that quickly just, you know, again, adds those in there and anything you can kind of do to speed up your drawing process in this program means you get done with your work faster, which means you have more time to not do work, uh, which I am a huge advocate for. So I highly recommend anytime I give you guys like a little speed saving tip, um, go ahead and do it. But anyway, so this is just a little pantry. Um, I didn't bother fully decorating this, but you can see that it very quickly filled out um, and generated those drawings, which is one of the huge strengths in Revit, is that you can very quickly generate all your construction documents off of a completed model. So once you're done with the model, you're basically done with your project, right? Um, there are a couple um, uh, weird things about the uh, elevations, though. So one of them, I'll use it, I'll highlight that with um, this drawing right here. So this should be four. And indeed, we have north, east, south, and west. OK. All right, so we have these three elevations here. And you can see that if we click on it, it shows kind of this area right here. And you get this thing that goes across, and then this other thing. Um, let me go and we'll highlight, or we'll open this view up. So this is the elevation looking kind of out towards and under the stairs. Um, let me pull this one off too so we can see the changes I'm making. So <clears throat> um, that's the elevation as it stands if I click on this. Now you have a couple controls here. So there's these left and right little drags. If I was to drag this in a direction, it's going to update this drawing, right? So if I drag it that way too far, it's going to go through this wall. If I drag it too far, it's not going to line up with that wall. When you're doing elevations, you're often making a lot of judgment calls of, okay, well, is, um, you know, what is this area right here? Should I have a separate elevation tag that's strictly looking up the stairs to highlight something? And the best answer I can always give you guys is you should document everything as often as possible. Um, so this was a fairly simple layout, and I probably, again, um, could have done something different on the level two here where I did a different elevation marker here. Um, but that's kind of, you know, at a certain point, this becomes an art rather than a science. Um, I would leave that up to your discretion on the individual model. So the other thing I want to show you, in addition to this right, that left right there, is you can also drag this around, right? So if you were able to drag this around, you could adjust where it's starting the drawing from because that's what this line represents. Now, if I was to leave this here and then drag this handle forward and back, if I was to drag it here, everything disappears. Well, everything didn't just disappear. I just shortened the render range that this has to a point where it was no longer showing the stairs. So if I put it in the middle of the stairs, you see the further railing has disappeared. Bring it back, and now you see the extra lines from that further railing. So all of these elevation markers have that. And, you know, often, like, you can see that one draws all the way through. It's no big deal that it draws all the way through. Uh, it doesn't really matter for a lot of things. Um, but if you are having an issue where you are documenting a very large room, uh, and this one looks like it's fine, but I've uh, we've occasionally come across... Actually, where was that, too? Yeah, so this is just short of that line right there. Um, again, because I'd probably document that wall as part of this area, I'd probably just pull this back and show that is um, what's visible in this elevation um, right here with that. So um, you do have a couple different options there. Another thing I'd want to show you, and we will actually drop another elevation marker right here, 
is if I wanted to highlight this entire space that's over here. Um, so if I go to elevation view, um, what we're left with is, um, and just to kind of show you guys what we're working with, um, this is a fairly large kind of two-story house. And um, if I go in and hide this wall, we'll get the ceiling. Um, we'll hide those in view. You can see that um, there's sort of this generally large seal or wall area that's right here. So I, if I wanted to actually show that as one single elevation, um, which one was it? This one, right? Uh, I lost it. Where is it? There it is. Okay. All right, here it is. Okay. So one thing I could do is I could go in here and just manually edit this elevation drawing, right? So if I wanted to show that entire kind of thing that's going on for that wall, I would be able to drag this over here. And then the ceiling is technically correct. It actually goes two feet above level three. Uh, not that there's a functional level three, but um, that there is just space there. And then um, for the sake of this drawing, I'd want to go, oh, I forgot which one is which. I need to close some of these tabs so I remember which one's which. Uh, let's close level three. There it is. Okay. Um, so the easiest way for me to modify this is to actually just move that marker, right? This is a great case for, um, I want to move the marker out of the way. And then I'm going to get as close to the stairs as possible. And then the other thing I want to do here, and we can literally move it like right there. And then right there. And so what that does, uh, again, I lost it. Um, elevation view. Okay. So here you can see you've got the doors, that whole entire wall. Am I missing the ceiling? Um, and then you would be able to come in here and if you wanted, um, you could edit the crop. So just like everything else, profiles um, in Revit, um, you can edit the crop here. So I would come down through here, draw an exclusion, uh, clear that and that. And then if I was feeling extra fancy, I could do these stairs. Wait, did I get the wrong spot? I got the wrong spot. There we go. Um, where is it? There it is. Okay. And, oh, didn't do the bottom part. Uh, and so just by doing that, I can clean up sort of the look of this elevation. Um, just by kind of clearing out those extra things that I don't need to show, right? So you do have a couple options again when it comes to sort of showing the depth and range of an elevation. Um, let's see. So for example, here's another spot, right? So if I had some things in this kitchen in this elevation, um, because that's a door void, actually, I don't think it would because it's a door void, it wouldn't. Let's find out, actually. That's what we're here for. Um, right now, my theory, and I don't recall, it as if the... Because I don't usually use those void elevations. So we're going to throw um, a desk right here. So, there it is. We'll go back to the elevation view. Yeah, so um, it marks that there... It marks that void right there with a X through that space, but you can see that there's a desk here. So let's pretend that that desk is actually the countertop here in the kitchen. I don't want that to be part of my um, elevation for this space um, because I don't think it's relevant to it. So what I could do is I could just pull this back to right about there and then that desk disappears and it's no longer part of the concerns of this render or of this uh, elevation, right? So <clears throat> um, that's how um, elevations work. Um, so you'll be shocked to find out that sections do basically the same thing. So, um, oh, I went a little too fast there. So we've got the view menu here. Let me close some of these old elevations. Um, uh, 
All right, that works. <clears throat> so then um, section cuts, uh, we'll switch over to here. Uh, let's do one through the middle. So I'm just going to go from this side right here, click and drag, bring it out to over here. Um, let's see. So then we can switch which direction it is by hitting the double arrows, just kind of like a lot of other things um, in Revit. And then just like the elevations, you get a lot of the similar controls. So there's a side drag right here that determines how much of the of the space you're or sorry rather that's the label what am i thinking um it's the, well you'd want to do both but you drag this out um and then can drag that bar out and that one um so that you could limit the range of this as well and then you have the uh or sorry the left right and then you also have this slider to adjust the depth of it at the same time so um, just like the other ones, I can right click on it, choose go to view, but um, if you've got a good eye, you'd also see that here it's been added to a sections menu. So I've got the elevations um, sub menu here, and then I've got the section sub menu here. So you end up with a couple different ways that you can access some of these things. And we can see, for example, now why my windows are too high. So that's fun. Um, I had a giant window. Oh, I did really big windows. That's why. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, with the section cut now, you can see there's different areas represented. And the whole purpose of the section cut, like we discussed in the previous class, um, is to give you an idea of how the space flows through. So that's why I like going through and doing big, broad cuts through the middle of my model is so that I can visualize what this space looks like as... Um, for example, the stairs are cut through. Well, what's the space above the stairs look like? What's the space at the top of the stairs? Because of where it was, it cuts through this hallway here in the middle of the house so that I can see, okay, that's, you know, how the space or the elevation of the ceiling changes as I move through this space, right? So we've got the closet, the walk-in, that downstairs uh, den or family room or whatever it was. Here's the walk up the stairs. You have a large area where maybe a chandelier would look nice there. That continues through this space at the landing and then you end up with a fairly tall hallway and then these are closets here at the end. And then here's the kitchen. Oh, I see what's going on. Yeah, we'll fix that. Okay. Um, so yeah, sections again, just like elevations, you can rename them. Um, for the purpose of this, just uh, section east west doesn't matter. I just I wouldn't call it that. I'm just showing you guys what it that you can't rename them. Um, and then just like putting elevations in the drawing or in the sheets, um, I'm going to go to sections here and I'm going to drag this in. Um, and what did this come in at? Quarter inch? Yeah. So it came in at quarter inch, which is fine for this house. Um, so. Just wanted to go over that as well um, so if you can figure out elevations you can figure out sections and you've got pretty much a lot of the steps of actually documenting your project um, nailed down pretty well so um, i will see you guys in the next video we will be going over phases which are going to be on the milestone this week